They glide through the streets like blue ghosts. Afghan women still too afraid to throw off their burqas. Yet there are thousands of others looking the world in the eye once more, and they're hungry to recapture what was stolen from them during years of repression. This is Kabul, Afghanistan, a city robbed of beauty during the harsh years of the Taliban regime. Now from the high fashion world of New York comes a bid to help Afghan women reclaim their culture of beauty and to give them a livelihood that will mean survival. It's an industry renowned more for cattiness than charity. For vanity rather than philanthropy. Yet some of the most powerful fashion companies and their executives have got behind a support scheme that started in one woman's salon chair. So you wanted to go for a change today. A I bit, love yeah. the idea of doing like a longish bag. I think it'll look yeah. really great. And I'll just make it a little chunky. New so York hairstylist Terry Grau knew she'd made it in the industry on the way to her first Vogue shoot in December 2000. So why don't you change into a smock and okay. we'll wet it. And do the cut. What she hadn't counted on was being so moved by the woman she was meeting, Mary McMakin, founder of PASA, a group supporting Afghan women. 72-year-old McMakin had lived and worked in Afghanistan for 35 years when she was denounced as a spy by the Taliban, arrested and thrown out of the country. And after I had met Mary, I was much more inspired by her to, you know, to look at women's issues because I was horrified with her stories. I love that my drastic change is like cutting a couple inches off my hair. Within a year, the chance meeting would set the New York hairstylist on a path to Kabul. Five weeks in Kabul, six weeks total. After the Taliban left, Mary saw that so many women were opening up storefront salons and they were doing it with very limited resources. So she was very proud of them and um, asked me if I would go and teach classes. And so I you know, thought, well, I can try to do better than that. A fundraising crusade saw cosmetics companies, fashion magazines and industry players put up half a million US dollars in cash and products to start a beauty school. I think generosity of spirit, you know, that's what I felt. And they're people too, just like us. And, you know, this is their way of giving back to women, and it's a great thing. It's really only going to work probably for, you know, 60 to 90 minutes. My lady's been really quiet through this whole process. She's quite compliant with whatever product we want to put on her. I like the quiet, shy types like that. A small team of helpers went looking for hair and makeup professionals willing to go to Afghanistan as volunteer teachers. There's nothing worse than doing a full head of oils and seeing spots. That's the one you should try to also get. In an inspired move, they sought out Afghan-American women already working as hairdressers to form a bridge between cultures and language. For each, it would mean going home for the first time. Seema Culkin jumped at the chance. She last saw home 23 years ago. I didn't have the hope that I'm going to be going back, but now it's like yesterday wasn't soon enough that I should be there. Barely speaking English, Seema fled her war-stricken country with her five-year-old daughter for a new start in America. At the beginning, it was really hard. I missed home every day. I used to cry. I used to dream. I, I mean, after a while, life 
life kind of pushes you to be adjusted to adjust to where you are and what you do. Even after the Taliban fled, it didn't occur to her she could be of use back home. I said I wasn't a doctor. I wasn't a need for me. I wasn't a nurse. What could I do? What could I teach them? And this came along. Two decades in America, she says, have not made her forget those she left behind. I was one of the lucky ones to leave. I survived, I learned, I saw a different world. I'm a different person, but deep down in my heart, I'm still an Afghan. The Afghanistan Seema remembers bears no resemblance to the country so racked by war for the past 20 years. It was grass. green, grass, flowers. Afghanistan was another heaven on earth. She recalls a privileged childhood shared with her three sisters and two brothers. At university, she enjoyed a freedom that soon became lost to Afghan women. Well, their scarves are much bigger than what we were. We were much smaller like this. And the chadar, um, are they just as sheer as you guys yes, were? Mostly now remarried, Seema, her husband Hugh and daughter Soraya share a comfortable American existence in Falls Church, Virginia. But days from now, she'll revisit her past. It's not still real. I have to be on the plane. I have to get there to believe I'm there. It's like a dream. It's a dream. I have been away for 23 years. One big smile, guys. One, two. And they now have a name, Beauty Without Borders. Hello, The first to go, Seema and Terry. For Seema, her first glimpses of Kabul have left her too numb to even cry. I am in shock. I am in shock. I tell, keep telling myself, it's a dream. I'm not here, and it's not, it's not the way it, it should be. And I thought what we saw on the news and the, everything, it was always oh, not going to be like this. But it's worse than it was, worse than what I saw. It's just mind-boggling to see what happened to it. They have gone through so much that you can't describe it. I feel guilty coming here and say I'm doing something. I haven't done anything. I haven't. And I felt like they were the one that saved the place, the home for us to come back to. We didn't do anything. One of the best parts on the flight when they said we are going to cross the border and we're going to be going to Afghanistan, and that was the part that I like. I'm home now. In the two years since the fall of the Taliban, money has flowed into Kabul, but to very few hands. There are more goods to buy. Businesses have opened, but the rewards have not even begun to trickle down to the poorest. Poverty is everywhere. God, I can see it. Afghanistan or Kabul that so far I've seen it. They've gone back about 100 years, not even 20 or 50. I left here 23 years ago. But what I see right now, I don't see anybody the way we dressed before. I 
I will never leave <laughs> like the way I left before and I thought I'm gone. I don't think I can live there again the way I did before. At the beauty school, there are just two days to the inaugural class and a mountain of work to finish. Patricia O'Connor, a marketing consultant to the beauty industry in New York, has been pivotal in bringing it all together. Let's look at the instructions and see how they're put up. I don't know there are any. We don't have any instructions for anything. We have to like guess as we go along. It's been fun. Everything here is like, is like figure it out. No, it's I'm like, saying, even if you put the it's like when you need like a Martha Stewart type, you can sort of come in and take a look at it. Confronted by a band of energetic, driven foreign women, local tradesmen try to build a slice of New York in the middle of Kabul. And I walked in and all of a sudden it's just, I, you know, everything that needed to get done came to me at once almost. So it, it was, was a little over, do. it was a lot to do, a lot to do. Um, so it was a little overwhelming. I mean, who rings it's who? been a logistical nightmare. Still missing, 90 mannequin heads from China. So there's somewhere here, there's some man with 90 heads. <laughs> Specifically, because I didn't like this. How do I describe it? Um, nothing short of a miracle. And miraculously, it does come together. Too many women have turned up for the first three-month course, and some are sent away till next time. Each of the women works as a beautician of sorts, some with many years' experience, some novices. But for most, it will be their first formal training in a business that's booming. Beauty salons have cropped up all over the city. Finally, women can openly work at what they've been doing in secret under the Taliban. And they can make lots of money. Cosmetics, hairstyling, what they lack in subtlety they make up for with enthusiasm and every colour of the palette. But there are serious issues of safety, hygiene, the use of chemicals, the lack of training. The beauty business badly needs a facelift. The Shanghai mannequins have arrived in time for class and the women are ploughing through the curriculum. It's not easy. Hairdressing is very difficult to learn and it's a condensed um, curriculum. It's a country where 60% of the women are widows, and most of those in this class are the breadwinners of the family. Beauty is still a luxury for the Afghan woman. One wedding makeover can earn them the equivalent of a tradesman's monthly wage. Part of our classes are teaching them a small course of business, how to build a clientele, how to save the money, 
they can start from one chair and they can go high, bigger and bigger to become a hairdresser with the big salon. Two members of the one family, 18-year-old Wajima and her aunt Jamila, hope it will turn around the family fortunes. If they pass the course, they want to open a salon together. <laughs> Wajima harbours dreams of one day going to medical college. But for now, her plans are grounded in practicalities. In the poor neighbourhood where they live, Wajima shares housing with 25 members of her extended family, 14 of them children. Though her father and two brothers are working, they urgently need more money. They borrowed heavily to send one of her brothers to Australia. Her brother Jamshade, she explains, risked the refugee path, a boat from Indonesia to Australia, only to be caught and interned in the Broom Detention Centre. The family says he spent two years behind the prison wire before giving up his bid for asylum and returning home last year. <laughs> Wajima's aunt Jamila is a teacher, but she worked secretly at home doing makeovers during the Taliban years to supplement her income. Some tea for you. Can you get some tea? You're right. Yeah. Kuchara Mosai lives in Okimimat, Hodokla Chodi, but then we are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. They were threatened once by the Taliban and Jumilla's brother was taken to jail for three days. But it wasn't as bad as the treatment she saw meted out to one woman. Yet Afghan women, they say, risked everything for the sake of looking beautiful. It was an act of defiance that allowed them a modicum of control in a life controlled by others. <laughs> This is the school that my brother and sister went to and my cousin. For Seema, it's time to confront the past. She's returning to the home she left behind. 
This was my bedroom. This was your bedroom? <laughs> that was my bedroom with my sister, yes. Oh, I hope to God somebody's here. <laughs> I hope somebody's here. Salam alaikum, Baba Jan. Chidur asti. Jan adur. Shukr. Bu farman. Kas hast da khana? Kasi nista ne. Dar vaza vazes? Ye daftar asta. Ah, khani mas. Mei tanu bi 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 ne. Oh, mera vani, mera vani. <laughs> the house is just the way she left it more than 20 years ago. Hers are the same. <laughs> this was my room with my sister. We were together. We didn't need friends outside. There were six of us. Just coming home from school and sitting oh in that little room and whispering with my sister and talking about what we went through. Her family, she says, has no intention of abandoning their home again. It's still our house. My mom has the paper. and My brother asked me to check everything out. He wants to move back. Do you feel that you're paving the way for them to come back? I hope so. At school, it's the big day. Opening day for the Kabul Beauty Academy. There are two guests of honour, Mary McMakin, the woman who inspired the scheme, and Afghanistan's Minister for Women's Affairs. We've been working for over a year on this project and we've been very lucky. We've had great support from both the Minister and the Deputy Minister, who both are here tonight. Um, and they've been really supportive in helping us bring this to life for the Afghan women. Here in Afghanistan, they need a lot of things. I mean, obviously, this country is being rebuilt from the ground up. They need so much. They need medicine. They need better hospitals. They need housing. Um, but they also need an ability to earn a living. مرکز ترینینگ یا مرکز آموزش خوب ترین استفاده را بکنند. انشالله که میشه که بگویم که یک قدم مثبت است بر خانم و یک آموزش است. For Seema, this has been more, a personal journey to make two halves of her life whole. When I first saw the women and I listened to them, I couldn't look at them. I was so ashamed and embarrassed. I ran away from here. I left them alone. I wanted to hug and kiss them. I want to kiss their hands and feet because they were the one that saved the country for us. It's my promise to myself and to the women in this country. I can't help them all, but if I can help two at a time, I'll be back again.